Why are cause effect statements a distortion of communication? David Hume, the most important philosopher of the 18th century said, if B always follows A, then A is the cause and B is the effect. But as we humans can never establish whether B always follows A, cause and effect are beyond our ability. Nietzsche, the most important philosopher of the 19th century said, cause and effect can never happen at the same time. First you have the cause and then you have the effect. That means that there has to be time in between the cause and the effect. And nobody knows what happens in that in between time. Bertrand Russell, an important philosopher in the 20th century said, even if there is no time between cause and effect, then due to the fact that the cause takes time and the effect takes time, you can ignore the first half of the cause and the second half of the effect. As you can repeat this trimming down of cause and effect, you end up with nothing. Bruno de Finetti, the most important philosopher of the 20th century said, cause and effect presuppose knowing them with absolute certainty. As everything in the real world comes with a measure of uncertainty, it is better to never talk about cause and effect ever again. Milton Erickson, the godfather of hypnotherapy said, cause and effect statements are very useful in hypnosis because people dislike doing things without a good reason. Richard Bandler, the founder of modern day NLP says, always use cause and effect statements within NLP because NLP uses the hypnotic language patterns as I discovered while studying with Milton Erickson. Joost says, so use cause and effect statements to hypnotize people, but never believe in your own cause and effect statements or those of other people because otherwise you have only hypnotized yourself. For a more detailed exposition of these ideas, read the ABC NLP Handbook, 